Today we have with us a special guest. 33-year-old Neil Harbison is the world's first cyborg artist, someone who hears colors. Thank you for being with us on Live on Live today, Neil. When and when, sorry, when and why did you decide to become a cyborg? Well, in 2003, I decided that I wanted to extend my senses. So I started this project where I wanted to sense color through an independent sense. Uh, basically, we started this project of creating an antenna that would go implanted in my head so that I would be able to hear the sound of colors. Right, but what was the necessity of uh, having this implant in the first place? It was the curiosity of, of, ex of, of sensing colors because I was born colorblind, completely colorblind, so I always had an interest in color. And, um, but I didn't want to change my sight because seeing in black and white has many advantages. Like I see better at night, I can see better like shapes. I, I remember shapes easily than people that see color because color can distract you from shapes. Also, um, you can see distances better. You don't get fooled by camouflages as well because many camouflages are based on color. So I didn't want to change my black and white vision. I wanted a new sense of color. And then that's why we started this project of creating a, a, an antenna that would allow me to hear color. Right. Now, what kind of implant is it? Which part of your body is it attached to? So it's uh, implanted at the back of my head and it's four implants. Actually, it's two antenna implants. One is uh, also a chip that vibrates whenever there's color in front of the antenna. And then uh, the other implant is uh, internet connection so that I can receive colors from other parts of the world or I can connect to satellites and then sense colors from space. Right. Now, speaking of this antenna, it juts out from the back of your skull. What, what purpose does this serve? Well, it allows me to extend my perception of reality beyond human limitations. It includes infrared and ultraviolet, so it allows me to sense colors that my body would never be able to sense. It also allows me to sense colors that are not around me, so I can sense uh, colors from space, which I, I wasn't able to do that before. So it's uh, a way of extending my reality, and uh, it's an, a body part that is continuously evolving. The aim is to go beyond infrareds, beyond ultraviolets, go to uh, microwaves, also to x-rays, and the aim is to just continuously extend my perception, because there's so many things that are around us that we cannot sense, but that other animal species can sense, uh, or the technology can sense. Uh, so I thought it was logic to actually add these senses to my body so that I could perceive reality in a deeper way. That's astounding because uh, with this antenna, you can perceive colors or you can perceive wavelengths which normal human beings won't be able to see. Yeah, but other animals, species can. So it's actually, I find it normal to sense infrareds or ultraviolets because there's many, many other animal species living right now in this planet that can sense these colors. They are all always around us as well. So it's interesting because they behave a bit differently. Uh, Infrared allows me, for example, to know if there's alarms in a building, if the, uh, there's movement detectors on or off in a shop or in a bank. And in many cases, they're off, so it's interesting also to sense <laughs> this. Ultraviolet allows me to know if it's a bad day to sunbathe, because if I hear a lot of ultraviolet, then I know it's a, a bad day to sunbathe because it can damage my skin, or I, I put extra cream protection. So these are colors that are around us and that we should also sense. That's right. That's very interesting. Now, you are the uh, world's first artist what art form do you practice i think becoming a cyborg is an art form so i see the antenna as an artwork and I, I see modifying my mind as an artwork as well instead of sculpturing um, uh, a piece of clay i'm sculpturing my brain and i'm creating a new sense instead of uh, sculpturing uh, also on stone i'm adding an antenna in my body so i see uh, becoming a cyborg as an art form itself and then I can use the new sense created by the union between technology and my body to express myself through a new sense, in my case, the sound of color. And uh, this is also a, a way of expressing yourself artistically as a cyborg art. So um, I guess cyborg art could be defined as uh, expressing yourself through new senses created by the union between humans and technology. Now you held the, the so-called color concerts. Can you explain to our listeners what exactly they are? Well, now that I hear colors, instead of playing an instrument, I can just play music by looking at things. So I, what I do is I buy different colored objects. I go to a supermarket and I buy uh, different products that sound good. And then I put them on stage and then I look at these objects and I amplify the sounds from my head to the audience so that they all can hear the colors. And then I compose music by looking at colors. But also lately I've been using satellites to play the colors from space because uh, when I connect to NASA's International Space Station, 
I can hear the colors from space. So uh, I also amplify these colors to the audience and then we can all hear the sounds of the colors from space. That's fascinating because uh, one of the things uh, you've done is also uh, explain, explain different paintings in forms of sounds. Now, which among these paintings have been the most interesting in terms of tones, the most melodious, let me put it this way? Well, it's changed completely the way I sense art because now I go to an art gallery and I can listen to a Picasso, I can listen to a Salvador Dali and they all sound different. So painters have become composers and they're all very different. I, I like Andy Warhol sounds very loud and very pure notes. So it's very particular uh, sounds that he creates. What's your opinion about Picasso? Picasso is a variety of sounds, uh, so there's but there's periods where there's a lot of C sharp and C's, a lot of um, blues, and then um, the Lee, I guess it, it can sound a bit chaotic. He's very colorful, so <laughs> yes, sometimes it's it's very noisy, whereas uh, more old paintings sound less because they're less saturated. So uh, Da Vinci's uh, or um, Goya's, they sound uh, very soft because they're less saturated. And uh, have you seen Mona Lisa? I mean, that's the most famous painting. Uh... Yeah, she sounds good. She <laughs> she has an interesting uh, shades of F sharp and between F sharp and G. So uh, she's um, she sounds very microtonal. Right, now these are the sounds of the painting. So can you tell us about the sounds that a uh, layman listens to in everyday life? Say, I don't know, doorbell or telephone ring. How do they, how do you interpret them? I mean, the, in terms of colors. Yeah, the secondary effect of hearing color is that when I listen to other sounds, I also feel color. So when I listen to music, each note that I hear, I relate to a color. So, for example, if I listen to Mozart, uh, in, in, in his case, there's a lot of yellows because he, he plays a lot of Gs, uh, whereas Amy Whitehams is, is more red and, and violet. So each artist uses um, a variety of notes but usually there's a dominant note which is a dominant color also people's voices have color because when we speak we use different frequencies so uh, for example martin luther king had a very blue and violet voice um, uh, kennedy a very green voice uh, so uh, now obama has a very red voice because he uses a lot of f when he talks so we all have our own dominant tone of voice which also relates to a dominant tone of color that's right. That's fascinating. And now, uh, because of this antenna, have you had any unique experiences either during concerts or even in your everyday life? Well, I've been stopped every day of my life since March 22nd, 2004, because when I walk around the street, people see that I have an antenna sticking out of my head. So people stop me and ask me what it is. So I've met so many, so many strangers every single day of my life so that that it's um, it's every day there's uh, something going on. that There's... There's lots of yeah anecdotes, I guess. Um, Which was the most memorable for you? I remember in Italy there was this old man who asked me what it was, and I explained it very carefully so that he could understand. And he he said that was very good, but can it make cappuccinos? He said, and then because <laughs> it does look a bit like the part of the coffee machine that actually <laughs> creates the cappuccino, so it it was uh, one of the. And I wasn't expecting this from him because he looked very old and very serious. Right. Now you have taken cyborgism to an entirely new level. As you mentioned, uh, this implant is getting modified or evolving all the time. Uh, where does cyborgism go from here? Because now you can uh, listen to sounds, you know, which normal human beings can't. So where does cyborgism go from here? Well, we're in stage in history where we can actually start extending our senses by creating new senses and new body parts. So I think that we'll slowly see more people with new body parts and new senses that will allow us to extend our perception of reality to the level of other animal species. I think we'll also see the use of the internet as a sense, not as a tool. Uh, in my case, I use the internet as a sense to perceive the colors from space. So in a way, we can now start exploring space by sending our senses to space instead of going there physically. Instead of going through the struggle of traveling to Mars, we could all send our senses to Mars and feel that we are entirely there instead of having to physically go there. And this, this is a thing that I think we'll start seeing more and more, a way of uh, using the internet as a sense. Right. And now there's an app called iBorg on the Android uh, operating system. Tell us more about it. Uh, can a normal person sense what you sense through your implant? Yeah, there's an app that allows you to use your, the camera of your phone to hear colors. So 
it basically picks up the light frequency of the color in front of you and it allows you to hear the note of that light frequency. It's important to know that it's, it's not an arbitrary relationship. The sounds that I hear are the actually sounds of the f light frequency. So if we could hear the sound of the light of red, we would hear a specific note and that's the notes that I hear. That's right. Uh, thanks a lot, Neil, for joining us on Live on Live. It was a pleasure. Thank you.